Hi guys, my name is Armin. I'm head of product development at UF Pro. Today I want to introduce the Striker X pants, our newest combat pants to you. But before we dig into the details of the Striker X, I would like to talk a little bit about the history of our Striker combat pants. So this is Striker combat pants. They were developed in 2012, launched in 2013 and like you can see they were really going through a lot. It's really one of the first pants that uh, actually I think it's out of out of development and you know like you see they're a lot used but what you see here and that was for me that was actually the most revolutionary thing here we were using in this upper thigh area we were using a material which was extremely air permeable same thing on the back you have in this area this super air permeable material the sad thing is that unfortunately the material was discontinued so after the striker combat pants we wouldn't even have any more access to this superb material rest of the pants are made of a normal cotton material we had side pockets lower leg pockets and what we thought at that time um, is a good idea we had some loops in the upper thigh area for for tourniquets already at that time we had a double um, a double uh, zipper slider fly we had double belt loops elastic waist and pockets for knee pants again they could be opened for additional ventilation as well and they had lower leg width adjustment of course also the possibility for inserting a windstopper liner and we thought that they're genius yeah we also had some stretch we had stretch in the in the crotch area uh, a little bit of stretch in the back area and those were the days of the striker combat pants but then everything changed in 2000 i think it was in 2014 we launched the Striker XT combat pants with enormous changes. So first of all, the waist was much higher than before. Still, it was elastic. We had, uh, we had press buttons for closures, double, double belt loops, uh, double zipper slider fly. But I think the most revolutionary thing was the, the, the knee section the actually the section in which uh, knee pads could be inserted but not the like in the previous model we just had the possibilities for the soft knee pads but here we had then for the first time the possibility to insert uh, soft knee pads in this pocket and in these Cordura areas you could insert in here the solid pads and they were I think they were they were the first ones which really had you know that the, the whole knee section tailored in a way that um, the pads were always at your kneecaps so however you landed on your knees the knee protection was always there the side pockets were much bigger also the lower leg pockets much bigger than before and for the first time we had that width adjustment because we thought it's a good idea to have whenever you're wearing something in the lower leg pocket to have the the lower leg section also tighter so that things don't dangle around and for the first time we also had in the combat pad in, in the combat pants we had a huge stretch area in the back but as we didn't have access to camouflage materials uh, for this stretch material um, we had to sew on top of the stretch materials the the back pockets 
just in order to disrupt this uh, plain color area here in the back area. So that was Stryker XT, the first generation in fact. And then there came Stryker XT Generation 2 with quite a lot of changes. Waist remained like it was, knee section remained like it was. The one of the changes was we had the we have now the, the boot hook. We have reinforced stretch, uh, reinforced Kodura areas here, still the width adjustment on the lower legs. But the main difference when asked, I would say, is that the stretch area is now in one piece. There is no more sewn on pockets. Um, we have integrated the, the back pockets into this stretch area. So access from here. Uh, the advantage, of course, is that we have a lot more stretchability here in this back area. And that was definitely a huge improvement when it comes to comfort. Now, a lot of people are asking us, what is the difference between the Stryker XT Generation 2 and the Stryker HT pants? Let me show you that. HT stands for high temperature, so the main difference between Stryker XT Generation 2 and Stryker HT is of course the additional ventilation that you have here in the crotch area. And this makes a huge difference, especially in high temperatures. That's why we call them Stryker HT. So you have here in that critical area, you and you could really also feel that you have additional ventilation and that additional ventilation makes all the difference. All the rest of the pants remains the same. So compared to Stryker XT Generation 2, the main difference is definitely the ventilations. And maybe a little difference is that here in the back, the width adjustment um, is here from the outside and you can regulate the and fix the excess of the bungee cord like this. And then there came Stryker X. The idea for Stryker X was coming from the feedback that we received uh, from a lot of Special Forces guys who were wearing already Stryker HT, Stryker XT, Generation 2. Um, there were a couple of minor comments, but they triggered, they triggered a whole new series of, of changes. Now, one of the ma major changes was that, um, of course, the difference between Police Special Forces and Military Special Forces is that Police Special Forces are very close or they operate very close to their base. So their missions take 3, 4, 12 hours, maybe 24 hours, but they always return to their bases. Totally different with a soldier. Um, it could be that he's out in the field for a couple of days and, and there it's so important that the pants are durable. They are as durable as possible. So if they rip, then you have to have the possibility to easily repair them. And of course, in the first place, you have to avoid that they even rip. So there is a couple of critical places in, in combat pants, um, like, for example, sewn on pockets. Let me just pull the Stryker XT Gen 2 pants up there in order to show you the difference. This here could be a potentially weak spot because if you're if you're crawling you could the seam could catch somewhere uh, branches or somewhere else and it could potentially rip. You see here in the Stryker X pants that critical point is covered with another seam. So there is nothing that could rip. 
Same thing in the lower leg pocket. You have here, you have a couple of potentially weak spots. It rarely happens that it breaks, but when it breaks, then, um, yeah, you're in trouble. We have solved that here. You think there is no le lower leg pocket? There is a lower leg pocket. It's here. So it's all integrated here in these seams. There is no critical point anymore which could rip. The other thing was that lower leg pockets, comments that we received again were usually lower leg pockets uh, in the military area. They're used by medics. Medics have stuff in this pocket. And of course, um, a vertical access to that pocket is it's much more logical, it's much more ergonomical, because if you're kneeling down, then you access from here to that lower leg pocket. So the access is vertically instead of a horizontal access, like on the Stryker XT. Knee section. You know from other combat pants and potentially also in the Stryker XT and HT combat pants, um, that any kind of knee padding could be ripped out if, if it gets caught, let's say you're in a bush, you're exiting a, a tank, a helicopter, there is any kind of possibilities where something could get caught and you can be sure it will get caught sometime. The good thing in the Stryker XT is already that even if it gets caught, it might mean that, go again back here, if that section gets caught here, then you might rip that out, but still the knee protection stays in place, but it's not good. So the knee protection, the system, the, the, the logic behind the knee protection is again like in the HD and in the XT, um, but it's all sleek designed. There is nothing where you can rip. So like I said, durability drove all these ideas which we put you know, under the headline enhanced durability for soldiers. The other, the other part of enhanced durability is that uh, if something breaks and uh, there is always a possibility that something breaks, then you want to have that field repairable. Um, critical points always are closures. It's Velcros which get jammed with um, dirt, debris or some kind of stuff and they won't hold anymore. So we said we don't want to have we don't want to have Velcros in these pocket areas for, for the closures. So we have Canadian buttons and they're easy to repair. So if they rip, you can easily, with a thread and needle, you can easily repair it. In the waist, again, the same thing. There is a, a Canadian button, but of course there is also the hook as the first retention for the, for the waist. Side pockets, just the same. Canadian buttons. And in addition to the Canadian buttons in the side pockets, you also have a bungee. And that bungee, if that breaks or if something happens to it, it's easy to exchange. You see both sides? It's just a simple knot. People were asking us, why, why are you making just a simple knot? Why don't you take uh, some kind of a plastic clip you know, a plastic clip, if you're wearing uh, some kind of strap or webbing, uh, harnesses or whatever on top of that, then any kind of plastic uh, regulator that you would insert here, it presses on your thigh and it's not comfortable. So durability, enhanced durability, uh, field repairable, repairability, that is one of the key key features of the, of the new Stryker X combat pants. Um, the other thing was that there was a requirement and there is a requirement for putting 
more gear in the side pockets. Now this is a philosophical um, discussion. Um, do you, if you have a bigger pocket, you put more stuff into the side pocket. Um, sometimes you put too much into your side pockets, but still you want to have a big side pocket for critical gear that you want to carry with you. So what we said is we make the side pockets larger and they're much larger than on the XT. The access to the side pockets is much bigger. It's not on a zipper because a zipper always limits your accessibility. So there is large access into the side pockets. In addition, we have this small pocket here on the upper thigh. You can put whatever, your snooze, a compass, uh, whatever. Even a telephone f would fit in here, the, the smaller ones. You have in the large side pocket, you have always two retentions. There is the buttons, but you don't even have to close the buttons because that elastic cord, if you adjust according to the you know, strength of your si of your thighs if you you know regulate these cords by simply making another knot so that it really closes tight enough so that things don't fall out there uh, even if you forgot to close your side pockets i personally i'm usually closing just the the back button leave the front open i still have access to the side pocket <clears throat> because that is expandable so you really can get to most of your stuff that you're wearing in the side pocket um, and if you want to put a magazine in you just fold the flap inside and inside you have elastic so these elastic straps they are wide enough for a magazine so that a ma magazine is secured in the side pocket you leave that pocket open and you have easy access to your magazine. Also in the lower leg pocket there is an additional strap where you can secure whatever you're wearing in the lower leg pocket. The upper thigh pockets, they have a stretch material sewn into the pocket as the, you know, how would I call that, the, the pocket pocket, <laughs> you know, the, the thing which is inside. Uh, so the inside of the pocket is made of a stretch material and it's shaped like this. So if you want to have something secured, you just have to tug it deep inside the pocket and then the stretch material grabs whatever you're, you're tugging in. And it keeps it safely in place, even if that closure is not buttoned down. But let's walk again down from the top. You see here in this area there is a little strap and that strap is with a rubber material so that your combo shirt doesn't slide out that quickly. The waist here it's padded so you have additional padding in this area. Double belt loops but just the front double just the front loops are doubled. Logic behind this is um, you're wearing a belt and um, you know for training purposes or as you're working as an instructor you want to slide your holster on with your gun and then you just open up these, open up the belt, slide the, slide the holster on, open that, uh, uh, close that again, close the, the belt and you're good to go. Of course also there is elasticity in the waist and of course there is also the possibility for the windstrip lining. And by the way, it's the same size, you don't need a, a, a different windstrip lining if you're having, like me, I'm having 32, 36 pants, all of my UF Pro pants are 32, 36, I can use the windstrip lining in all of my pants. Of course, also the Striker X pants have shoulder stretch in the back area. 
and talking about materials, uh, the whole pans are based on the no melt, no drip requirement. That means that the main materials are all no melt, no drip. This is a very specific requirement that comes from the military, so they are no melt, no, no drip. So if we wrap that up, then the new Striker X combat pans have mainly three, four key features which are really new and really different. First of all, we were working on constructions which are very, very robust. That means that in whatever exposure they should not rip, seams should not rip, constructions where we identified weak points have been eliminated and also uh, a lot of the closures are made so that they could be easily fixed and repaired with a needle and a thread. The second, I think, basic different feature is you have a knee section which is adjustable. Uh, we thought that this is very important, but we came up with a slightly different solution. So it's not that typical Velcro solution, but um, we were doing it with buttons. So they are safer, they are more robust, uh, and they would be also field repairable again. The third one is that uh, our pockets are I think not just a slightly different, but they are really different. They are much larger. Um, they are, um, I would say, more towards the requirements of, of soldiers, which really put different things into their pockets. So they're bigger, uh, they're the lower, um, the lower leg pockets, for example, they're more concealable, they're smoother. Anyhow, the in, in general, all the constructions are smoother. So one of the, one of the idea was that you cannot get caught too easily if you're in confined spaces, if you have to exit confined spaces, uh, tanks, helicopters, whatsoever. So we put a lot of focus on uh, details that you cannot get caught. So if you get caught, things can be pulled out and we don't want that. Things can uh, be ruptured or destroyed, so we don't want that. So very sleek design. The third one is one of the requirements that we were always confronted with in the military was this so-called no melt, no drip requirement. Um, we were trying to make main materials out of no melt, no drip materials. Of course, you're limited if you're talking about buttons, for example, they're usually made from plastic. So there is some limitations, but the main concept is the pants are no melt, no drip. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little history, this little evolution from Striker to Striker X combat pants. Um, hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.